How's it going everyone? My name is Nicholas Matteo and today I'm going to teach you guys how to do the Kodak 2383 film-like look in DaVinci Resolve. And the footage I'm using here is from ArcGrid. I highly recommend you guys use it for your own videos. And without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing I did is uh, created the color space transform with IDT and ODT. Basically, the point of this is to work within the color space of this camera. This camera was uh, shot on a Panasonic. And what I did here was I went into effects, went into the Panasonic gamut for the input color space and the input gamma, and put a DaVinci Y gamma and DaVinci intermediate for the output color space because that's the color space I want to work in. There's a lot more of a dynamic range with it. And then there's the settings for the output. Now for the color space here, I want to convert this to a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 look. Now, to start off with this image, it's obviously very, very overexposed looking, but the information is actually still there, but we had to bring it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into my custom curves right here and we're gonna create a very sharp S curve. The first thing I'm gonna do is just bring this down a little bit. And you can already see that we're getting some of that information back, but it's still not enough. There's still not any contrast or anything. So I'm gonna grab this end, which is basically uh, the, the black points and drag it until I find a spot that I'm satisfied with. I'm keeping an eye on the detail of the, the shadows and specifically her hair. Uh, somewhere around in there might be good. And then I might want to bring this up a little more. Again, I'm kind of looking around this area and you can see it in the, uh, the waveform. Okay, playing or playing around with this, you'll really start to get a grasp of the contrast. Seeing what works best for you, what works best for the footage, and what you're trying to do. For this, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to create this film-like Kodak 2383 film look with the help of a plugin that I'm gonna show you guys later. I don't want it to be too drastic. Somewhere around here. I'm also looking at the detail here. I don't want to lose any detail in the wrinkles. As you can see, if I go too far, both ends, it's about finding that balance. But my main focus, honestly, is really her. So I think somewhere around here is pretty good. Yeah, if I bring this up, you can see around this area, we can get some of that detail back. Okay. Now it's good. If you look at before, after, it's definitely a drastic difference. You can see the entirety of the image. Now, the next thing I do is I do my balance. And the way I do my balance is I go into my vector scopes and I see what there's an overabundance of. And even in here, there's way too much magenta in her skin tones. This right here is the skin tone indicator. This is where your skin should be sitting in. So as you can see, the circle is way too far in the red zone. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go into my primaries and then we're going to the offset and we're going to go a few steps down of red and maybe a little bit magenta. Maybe go to half a printer light of magenta, bringing some of that back. Somewhere around there. As you can see, the skin tones are a bit more natural. They're still a little red, but that's okay because we're going for a vibe. 
Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we wanna create this and we input this uh, Kodak 2383 look. This is D55, you can find it here in your LUTs. Go to Film Looks, this is already given to you with DaVinci. And you can go all the way down here to this one. I highly recommend you you guys play around with these three, but for the sake of this example, let's do this one. Now, it's important to note that when you initially apply the LUT, it's gonna look like that. It looks terrible, but that's because we haven't did our output color space or our ODT correctly because the output gamma is gamma 2.4. What we need to do is move it to Cineon Film Log. This basically gives the LUT room to breathe. So don't worry about how this looks because we're gonna start apply the LUT. And there you go. It's a lot softer. It's creating this kind of teal and orange look that we're going for, but we're going to go a few steps beyond that. So after you apply the LUT, we go into our look node and I'm gonna push it far and then I'm gonna dial it back. So the first thing I wanna do is actually start with my lift. I wanna bring it a little towards that teal look Don't worry about how the black points look. I'm just looking at my vector scopes right now. Okay. Then we're gonna contrast that with gain, which gain is mainly working on the highlights. The lifts are black points and gamma is sort of midtones. So with gain, we're gonna contrast that by pushing it towards somewhere around there. I know that these that this skin tone might be a little still a little too towards red, but that's okay because we're gonna fix that in HL cell curves. We just do before and after. It's looking pretty good so far, um, but I'm definitely going to go into my log wheels and go into my shadows. Decrease the the low range so we have more room in the black points to work with and do a little contrast. See, as you can see, there's a little bit too much teal, too much blue in the black point. So I'm just gonna contrast that a little bit. Somewhere around there. We're still going for a stylized look, so it doesn't have to be completely natural. It's all about what you're going for. So, the next step is we go into our HSL curves right here. Now, I don't want the, the orange bit to be a little too harsh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab her skin tone right around here, open it up a bit, and just drag it down a little bit, go too far and then dial it back. somewhere around there. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the blue here, but I'm still going for that look. So I'm still gonna dial it back though. So you come here. You go too far and then dial it up again. Somewhere around there. Now, I really want to make her pop from all of this. And you can even see that there's a little bit of vignette going, but what we're gonna do is we're going to pop it out even more. So we're gonna go here, go into our power windows, create a shape, and uh, rotate it. Stretch it out. I want to hit shift H for my Mac users, invert it. So we're only capturing this 
But then we need to soften out the full vignette. Shift H again. And now we're going to eyeball it. Bring it too far. And then find that sweet spot. Um, somewhere around there. I like that. Now for overall saturation, for this look adjustment, all I really wanna do is go into my RGB mixer right here and just increase these output channels a little bit and see if we can just make an overall look adjustment. Again, really considering what kind of look we're going for here. It's a subtle change, but it'll make all the difference in the end. Now, this looks pretty good so far if you do before and after. Well, actually, because it's so overexposed in its log form. Something like that, that's before, and that's after. Now, we only have, we have one more step to do, and this is the the third party plugin called Dehancer. I highly recommend you guys use this. So this is what the final looks like. As you can see, it adds some halation, some bloom, and of course the film grain. I'm gonna go through it step by step on which ones that I use. So. For this, I didn't really touch the profile Kodak, although you guys could, but this is what it would look like if you did. For this example, I don't particularly like this. Again, with the film print, you can do Kodak 2383, but I already did that with my, uh, with my LUT, so there's no point. But here's the film grain. I, when it comes to this negative film print, you obviously want your film type to be negative, and then you start playing around with the settings of the film grain. I don't wanna to go too far, especially with bright, with really overexposing the, the highlights right there. When it comes to the halation, sorry about that. When it comes to the halation, always put your mask mode on and always find these red spots here. And when you do, when you find these red spots, you're gonna to wanna, to, I mainly use local diffusion, global diffusion amplifier. And just see how far I can go. I'm mainly looking at the bridge of her nose here and the back of her neck. And just see how far we can take it. See, that to me is a little too much, so I'm gonna dial it back just a little bit. Honestly, the more subtle with these images, the better they are. And then here's some bloom. It's a subtle change. You can definitely notice it around the edges of her face. And, uh, there you go. That's about it. So uh, let's play the full clip. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials. All right, see you around.